What's up, disc golfers? Joe here with Joe's Disc Golf, and the podcast is back. Plenty to talk about, plenty to get into. We're talking DGPT All Star Weekend, we're talking Disc Golf Network updates and the media plan for the entire season. We're talking the ups and the downs with all of that. But before we get too far into it, we have to thank our longtime sponsor, Log from Blamo. What rolls downstairs alone or in pairs rolls over your neighbor's dog. What's great for a snack and it fits on your back. It's Log, Log, Log. It's big, it's heavy, it's wood, it's better than bad, it's good. Everyone wants a log, you're gonna love it, log. Come on and get your log. Log from Blamo. And for all of you out there who are too young or don't understand or never watch the show, not a real sponsor, that is from the Ren and Stimpy show. Probably one of the best shows I watched as a kid growing up. That looking back, I am so surprised at like seven years old, six years old, eight years old, I was allowed to watch that show. Oh my God. Uh, Great times, great memories. Me and my dad watching that show. Fantastic. Awesome, awesome stuff. The new remake thing was a load of crap, but hey, that's what you get. And I got a new bleep button, so we're going to test that fucking shit. Oops. We're going to test that shit out and hopefully it worked i don't have my headphones on because well i'm not live right now and you're probably noticing that as you're watching this on youtube this is not part of the live joe's disc golf broadcast going on there but that's because there have been some changes here i can't consistently live stream and this is kind of uh last minute when i was able to find out i was able to do this so a little housekeeping there, let, you know, can't do it. I'm going to try to get back into some live streaming here. Going to try to work through some issues here, schedule changes. I work high school sports. I'm in sports medicine. So things this time of year are getting rough with basketball ending, spring sports starting up, and it's just, I'm all over Hill and Dale. And believe it or not, I still have to sleep. For those of you listening on the podcast, well, thank you. And, uh, well, guess what? Uh, nothing changed here for you. So here we are. We got plenty to talk about. So I guess we should really jump into our first topic. And that is, we'll start with the Disc Golf Network unveiling their new pricing model. It was so super duper awesome. They unveiled it right before the All-Star event. And I got to say... It was a little frustrating because up until they updated their pricing structure, Disc Golf Network said, hey, you're subscribed. You're good. You're great. You're grand. You can watch this one. This is awesome. You can watch the All-Star Weekend. And then I go to click on it. Well, you actually have to pay us. I was like, I thought I did. I got emails saying I did. Then I looked at my bank statement. I did not. So there's something screwed up there. I've been watching my account that it's linked to, that it is the card that it is linked to and taking money from, maybe, to make sure I'm not double, triple, quadruple charged. Who knows? Don't worry. I will raise a stink. Otherwise, I'm good at that. I am good at that. Just ask the fantastic nutty professor, Justin Minichelli. I'm good at raising a stink. Anyway former PDGA president, I should say. Thank you for launching my career, my podcast, and my show here. I really do appreciate it. Back to the content, digressing too much from there, diverging. There are now three pricing tiers, basic, pro, and standard. So let's go over all these, get it all out there, see what's there. The basic, if you're a PDGA member, Guess what? You got it for free. It's already here. It's awesome. It's doing great. It's it's fantastic. So you don't need to do anything there. It's free. Otherwise, it's $5.99 a month or $59.99 a year. Totally not worth it. And here is why. You get live coverage of the first round of DGPT events and 
PDGA Pro Majors. You get live coverage of all rounds of the Chess.com Invitational, the USWDGC, and Champions Cup, and MVP Open. Looking at my notes because I have to remember which ones. MVP Open is one of the playoff events. I don't know if there's going to be more than one playoff event again because it certainly seemed like they didn't need another playoff event last year at least you get two live rounds the last two rounds of pro worlds and honestly if you're not a die hard disc golf fan died in the wool just i have to watch and consume all disc golf everything then honestly the three rounds before that mean jack shit to you because we'll I mean, they, they don't mean too much. There's a cut, but it, it's really not that big of a deal, especially because, well, it starts on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So you get to watch Saturday, Sunday. Let's be honest. That's when most of us are going to have our free time unless you're hosting a podcast or an absolute diehard fan. You get access to video on demand, the VOD of all this basic content and one registered device. So you can only be you can only register to one thing logged into one device at a time and playback at one device. I mean, you're getting it for free, so it's not too bad. It's, it's not too bad. Um, the thing is here, if you're not a PDGA member, don't buy this. It's a waste of money. You can catch all of this on their YouTube channel for free. Obviously there's going to be ads, but there's ads anywhere you go, except here where we have fake ads. So you get live coverage of those majors uh, or DGPT events, first round. It's free. Those are the good things. The bad thing is you can only register one device. So you can register your phone or your iPad or your Roku or your Apple TV or whatever. Not even going to get into that just quite yet because that is kind of a gripe through all of this. Moving on to the standard tier, you get a few upgraded features in honor of paying more money. You get to pay as a PDGA member $5.99 a month or seventy well $69.99. Nice. A year. Non-members $12.99 and $129.99 a month. Non-members, that's gonna be a tough sell, guys. I really do think it's going to be a tough, tough sell. It is slightly cheaper to become a PDGA member at 50 bucks. Plus the $69.99, so $70, it comes out pretty darn close. Live coverage of all rounds of all DGPT events and majors, excluding European Open, USDGC slash Throw Pink, because, well, PDGA does not own those tournaments, and Innova owns USDGC, and you see, I forget what... If it's actually like Discmania owns that, or if it's just a separate media company owns the rights to European Open, you get VOD access to all of that again, just like basic, but for standard, ad free next day, post produce Jomez, so you can watch it ad free. I haven't watched Jomez in a very long time. I don't recall there being a lot of ads, unless, I mean, YouTube is getting pretty brutal with their ads. Now, keep in mind, this channel is not monetized. Joe's Disc Golf is not monetized. So any ads you see are going 100% to YouTube. I do not see one penny there. So if you'd go over to my OnlyFans... No, kidding, 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 kidding. You can actually buy me a coffee. You can find the link in the description below. Buymeacoffee.com slash Joe's Disc Golf. Or on the website, it is basically the same thing as like patreon except more favorable to creators in terms of the cut that they take anyway back to the standard tier pregame and halftime apparently the in-between rounds of mpo and fpo you will get tournament central i know last year tournament central was awful especially at the beginning of the year it got better when ryan Earhart took over it definitely got better We'll see how they have improved, changed, and or completely fucked it up. Really hope that this bleep button is working. Don't know. 
you get two registered devices, so you can have your phone and your iPad, your phone and your computer, your phone and your Apple TV, your phone and your Roku, because let's be honest, we all have it on our phone. So, and you get two playback sessions at a time, so you can definitely share this with a buddy. That brings your cost to about three bucks a month if you can share it with a friend, if you have friends. Pros, cons, you know, ad-free, Jomez, cost-effective option for PDGA members. You know, that high cost for non-members is brutal. If we're trying to get more eyes on the prize, we want more people who aren't necessarily PDGA members. Remember, there's not even 250,000 PDGA numbers handed out, so a quarter of a million. And how many million people play each year, according to UDISC? What we need to do is get out of, like, I know there's a deal that they caught with the PDGA, so they're getting some money, exchanging hands, however they're deciding to do that. That's great. That's fantastic. Awesome. Cool. Good job. However, we need to make this, if we want disc golf to grow, if you want DGN to start making those fat stacks, you gotta you got to incentivize people who are non-members to do it. $12.99 a month is kind of brutal. Let's be honest. If you're not a disc golf fan, if you're just wanting to check it out, you still have to pay all that. You have to pay $14 if you want a pay-per-view model. I believe, I don't know if it's for all tournaments or if it's just the majors. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it was around there for one tournament. Yikes, 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 yikes. But hey, you know, it is the cost of doing business. I get I get it. I hear you right now furiously typing in the comment section of YouTube. Please go ahead, comment, thumbs up, thumbs down. Hey, whatever. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. And let me know. You know, maybe it's something I can't change. Maybe you hate the sound of my voice. And that sucks for podcasts, but thank you for listening this far. Maybe you don't like my opinion. Tell me why I'm wrong. Maybe we could have a nice little spirited debate where we keep it, you know, keep it above board. No dirty low blows, nothing like that. No calling somebody a stupid, you know, little bastard. But hey, whatever. Moving up to the pro tier, $12.99 a month or $140 a year for PDGA members. You're not... You heard that right. $12.99 a month. Non-members, it is $19.99 a month or $240 for the year. Are you insane? Are you actually insane? Who is going to pay that? That is such a hard sell for $13 a month. There are so many people who... (laughs) prices of all of these streaming services are going up. They really are. Netflix is getting more expensive. Amazon Prime is getting more expensive. Disney Plus, Hulu, everything is getting more expensive. I get it. So everybody is cutting back. So why would they keep Disc Golf Network? Why? They might bump down to a lower tier. They might not. I don't know. But you do get live coverage of DGPT events and majors. You get more live content. You get featured holes, alternate commentary, post-tournament, Tournament Central. You get VOD access to all that. You get nine bonus hour-long Tournament Central shows. You get nine bonus shows. Woo! Good job there. You get the first round ad-free. Not exactly sure how that's going to go. I don't know. Is it just going to be dead air? as a commercial is happening for everybody else watching, but you don't get it. So, you know, is it dead air? You're just watching, which can be good. Sometimes you get three registered devices and three playback sessions at a time. Now to my gripe for all of this, I get limiting the playback sessions. I get it. The more sessions, the more data you have to stream out, the more money it costs. So it makes sense that you're limited to one, two, or three, depending on your tier. I 100% understand that. I get it. Everybody has these restrictions. What I don't understand is why I can only have 
three registered devices or two or one. Why can I why why can't I be logged in on my computer, on my Apple TV and on my phone? Why can't I do that as a standard, not not watching, not watching, but now every time that I have to that I want to switch. If I want to switch from I've got it logged in on my phone because come on. I mean everybody has it logged in on their phone. Why do I have to log out of the Apple TV and then onto my computer? Log out of my computer, get onto my Apple TV. I know they've made it fairly easy. They did it last year. They're doing it this year where you type in a code. It's a hassle. It's a pain in the ass. And I don't understand why you can't have more than whatever, one, two, three, depending on your tier, logged in devices. Why? Please, somebody explain that to me. I'm not talking about streams. That is a completely separate thing. As I said, I understand that if you have to send out those streams of data, you're sending that out to how many ever people? 5,000, 10,000, whatever. And each one of those is the exact same thing. And if it's 100 megabits for this person, it's 100 megabits times 10,000 people or whoever, whatever the bit rate is, it is not 100 megabits. But... I don't understand why I can't have those just always logged in and it just says, oh, hey, you can't stream. So here you go. Maybe it's a limitation of their implementation of all of this because I can be logged into. I don't even know how many places I'm logged into Netflix at this point. But I can I can. And sometimes it yells at me. It's like, hey, too many people are streaming. So, you know, you can't watch. Do you want to kick someone off? And I say no, because I choose life rather than kicking my wife off or whatever. So why can't it be something like that? Like, hey, you know, sorry, you're still logged in. You still don't want to, you know, I don't want to make it a hassle. So there's there's one of my gripes. I understand that USDGC and European Open are paywalled behind the pro level tier. I get that because DGN, DGPT has to cut a check to USDGC, to European Open, for those media rights. Otherwise, they'll just sell them to somebody else. So it makes sense that that's kind of paywalled there. The one good thing that I will say is you can jump between tiers. Right now, if you're not subscribed to DGN and you're a PDGA member, don't. Wait until next month. Because chess.com full tournament in Florida. Florida. Yo, is free it's 100 percent free on there you'll be able to watch it on disc golf network i'm not 100 percent sure i'm i'm guessing it'll also be fully on youtube don't quote me on that i don't know for sure you'll find out in the preview show yeah and i have a preview show that will be coming out uh late thursday night early friday morning before the tournament i want to catch the interviews before i want to get that out let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do I just get the preview show out there and do a separate standalone third show talking about the interviews if something cool comes up? If not, then, hey, you know what? Press conference happened. Done. Done, done, done. So the other thing is with this pro level, I know, kind of weaving in and out, bouncing here and there and everywhere. With the pro level, what... What bonus? Like you get all this bonus content, but who watches that? Serious, like serious question. I don't. It was included in my standard fee, whatever standard level. The only option that they had, like there's the PDGA free, and then there was the paid. And I paid last year, and I watched all the tournaments and everything. But as soon as the season was done, I canceled that membership, and then restarted it here in February before I found out all this new stuff and then I thought I paid and didn't but you know, I, I'm not gonna rehash that the point is like I'm I'm done pay I'm not paying for November December and January because I don't care I didn't watch putting league on Joe Mess's channel when it was free on YouTube and I still believe it's free but I'm not gonna watch like I'm not gonna watch that uh Brian Earhart's catch series fantastic concept i'm not i i haven't watched it some of the other things that they've done on disc golf network i just i haven't watched it so who knows i don't know i don't know 
if you watch it, let me know. I mean, is there something on there? Is there a gem I'm missing? Is there something that I could watch? I mean, most of the stuff is weekly shows. There's plenty of time for me in February, well, and then in March, especially with how spread out everything is, to easily catch up in what I miss from November, December, and January. If they don't take time off around Thanksgiving, take time off around Christmas and New Year's, take time off at other times. I don't know. So is it is it worth it? In my opinion, the pro level is not worth it except for August, whatever. Well, USDGC in October. I think European Open is in August. So I would say go free in February. And this is not uh, somebody else on Twitter or Reddit posted this. I apologize that I do not remember who this was. Can't give proper credit there, but I know I saw it there. Go free in November, December, January, February, March through, I think, August. Go standard if you want to watch everything. If not, you can stay free, whatever. In August and October, go pro. That's an extra six bucks a month, seven bucks a month for just those two months. Downgrade. It's supposed to be really easy to go up and down. Don't know yet totally for sure, but we'll see. I'll let you know here in a little bit. But that's that's what we're talking about here. That's what we've got. I, I don't know if that bonus content that they're offering for the pro is actually worth it. Like I said before, my opinion, no. But who knows? Let me know. Let me know in the comments down below. Tweet at me at Joe's Disc Golf. Who knows? Let's get into the next segment. It was the All-Star Weekend. That's what we're talking about here. We're talking All-Star Weekend. That happened. Team Isaac, Team Missy both won. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. We had on Friday, we had the skills competition uh, surprise, surprise, Owen Scoggins, phenomenal putter, Andrew Marweed, phenomenal putter, Eliezra can throw the crap out of a disc over 500 feet, AB can throw the crap out of a disc over 700 feet, and yeah, there were skills, I don't, I don't even know who won the skills, and I, I didn't watch it, after the last couple of years of watching the skills competition, it was boring. Um, uh, the distance, don't get me wrong, distance was fun. Putting, eh? Eh? It's putting? They're better than me, but it's still not, like, exciting? Because there are plenty of guys around me in my local club that are better than me. And I'm just like, wow, I don't have the time. That's what it really comes down to. I mean, congratulations, I mean, don't get me wrong. Putting is a huge component of disc golf. It is, I mean, how you finish the hole 99.99% of the time, unless you ace or throw it in. And there's an argument to be made that that was a bad shot. But it's just boring to watch. It's hard to make it exciting. Then you've got the accuracy challenge. And again, it wasn't too exciting to watch in my opinion so there was that we had doubles doubles happened on saturday in the pouring rain that was underwhelming to say the least it was raining the crowds weren't really there because it was raining the weather was absolute shit there so it wasn't great to watch the players didn't look like they're having fun they didn't really want to be there the way the skills thing worked it didn't matter like none of that mattered when it came down to it, when we got into that, into the doubles, the amount of points available for doubles didn't really matter compared to singles. Singles was fine. It poured rain again and was awful. Ooh, I have to set the ambiance here. We have to make it so that you actually get the full. There we go. So it was just, it was absolutely miserable. There wasn't a crowd there, really. There's some people, but it wasn't exciting, like I said. Singles tournament, it was fine. They kind of ran it like match play, but then they didn't run it as match play. It was still stroke play. It was head-to-head. -head. 
So it wasn't really exciting. I, I don't know. It was a way for DGN to test out their system, and boy, were there issues because Reddit and Twitter were definitely saying, like, sweet, I upgraded and paid this money, and it's saying I didn't upgrade and didn't pay this money, but I have the bank credit card and the statement or whatever to say, hey, guess what? You definitely did pay, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. There, there was that. There was that. So there were issues there. People were having issues with buffering. Uh, the little bit I tuned in, I didn't have any buffering issues, so... I can't really, but I didn't watch that long, so I don't know. It, it sounded like there were people who were having issues where it would play for a minute or two and then buffer for like 10, 15, 20 seconds. And then it would play for another minute or two and then buffer and play and buffer. And just, it was not overall a good experience. On top of that, people were having other issues of it just cutting out, not starting at the right time, just app issues where they couldn't find things. I did not have those issues, so I'm having a hard time speaking to them. I know that people were complaining what I brought up before with the different tier levels and registered devices, why you can't have more registered devices. If someone out there can explain, please, please do, intelligibly, not that it's an artificial limitation put in by Disc Golf Network. I don't understand how having something logged in but not streaming, whatever. I've harped on that for far too long, far, far too long. I just, uh, there was that, this was, there was a lot of kinks to be worked out. And as per usual, the Disc Golf Network, Jeff Spring said, hey, this is going to be fantastic. We got rid of Vimeo. You can pause, you can rewind, you can go forwards, backwards, every which way up into live and not live and whatever, which is what you couldn't do with Vimeo. And that was so frustrating not being able to just pause and rewind and go back like hey you know i gotta step away for a minute i gotta pause i gotta do whatever oh cool i don't know what happened for the last five minutes sweet some people were having issues rewinding and and doing that again i didn't really try that out too much so the pro tour the disc golf network has a lot of work to do between the end of this all-star event, which ended yesterday as of time of recording, it is now Monday, and they've got until, well, I guess the press conference on Thursday to figure their crap out. Now, the press conference on Thursday, pretty easy. One or two cameras, all static shots, indoors, under tent, whatever. You can hardline those things. Not a big deal. Where you become, where you come into issues is when you're out on the course, when you're out there walking through the woods, walking up and down the hills, mountains, sorry, mountains. This is the former throw down the mountain tournament. After all, Florida known for two things, mountains and dense wooded forests. It's just kind of surprising to see that. Anyway, I digress. They've got a lot of work to do to figure this out. What worked surprisingly well was the PDGA live and how they were able to and I know it's still just estimates, but it feels like it was better where they're like, hey, this is five feet away. This is eight feet away. This is 12, 13, 14, 15, rather than just in those ranges of, well, this is 27 feet. Well, this was 16 feet. Well, this was five feet. Well, was it five feet? Was it under the basket? Was it 10 feet? Was it 16 feet? Was it 20? Was it 12? Was it 33? You know, what? what is that? Same with the Circle 2 makes. Was it a 34-foot Circle 2 putt, which is like, meh. I mean, that's still out there. Don't get me wrong. But a 34-foot C2 putt is very different than when it says, oh, 47, when it's, you know, not. Or they say, it was 41, 42. I forget what it was off the top of my head now. But, like, it's that's a very different shot. Like, 34 feet, you almost made C1. You're almost in a long C1 putt, which then would say 27 feet, which is not as impressive as 33. Still impressive. Don't get me wrong. But you see what I'm saying here. So that was kind of nice. And there are some more features. It looks like things are going well. It sounds like that that PDGA app has been in development 
for about 18 months. So they kind of, you just saw the writing on the wall with the development of this. So I was under the impression up until I heard an interview last week, I believe with Jeff Spring, where they talked about how long the PDGA app had been in the works. And it, it the way the announcement came out made it seem like, okay, this was all thrown together. PDGA bought Stat Mando, and now we have to make something in like two months and get this out. My expectations were so low, they're not even on camera at this point. That's how low they are. Now they're mid-level. There's some expectations that I have. We're going to see what happens when thousands of people are now trying to hit PDGA Live for this one tournament on top of all of the other tournaments that they run. I have been using PDGA Live since COVID. Basically, they made it mandatory. So like 2020, that summer, 2021, whatever that was. They basically made it mandatory and it worked well. I never had issues on top of that. You now have four times as many people at a tournament, uh, two to four times as many people at a tournament keeping score because of the new rule that went into effect January 1st, where everyone on the scorecard has to keep score. And I've heard pros, mainly Brody, bitch and moan about it, saying Oh, this is going to slow down. This is going to be awful. Blah, 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 blah. This is terrible. And we got to figure out who got it wrong and this and that. It's really not that difficult. It really, really isn't. It really isn't that difficult. It, I don't think it's going to be any more time consuming. On your walk to the next hole, you get your phone out. Boom. I got four. You got three. You got four, two. Sweet. Awesome. Your box. Cool. Next. It pops up immediately whenever there's an issue. And you just go back and you go, oh, whole four had an issue. Okay. Uh, three, three, three. Oh, four. Sorry. That was me. Oh, that was you. Sorry. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're bueno. I do like the change that it is not. If somebody else gets my score wrong, I'm not penalized as long as mine's right. How they're going to determine some of this stuff, I don't know. But you don't have to do this all on uh, an app. You can do it paper and pencil old school. It works. Whatever. Back to the (laughs) All-Star. Back to all this other news. So DGN was an absolute shit show. And we're hoping, I'm hoping that they figured out a lot of the kinks in the interim here. Because AWS is a good service. This Insys seems like they've got a pretty strong reputation there. So hopefully things are going better there. I don't know. You don't know. We don't know. Anybody's guess. We'll see. Hopefully everything works out and hopefully everything at chess.com invitational presented by sponsored by officiated by Discraft Florida Open. I don't even know what the tournament name is. Chess.com. Hopefully this all goes off without hitch and we really get some insight into what 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 the season's going to hold. What was something that was interesting that was brought up was that uh, Ganon Burr's bag is mostly old disc mania, uh, ba- Innova made disc mania, which in my mind, he's saying to the world that the new stuff sucks. Good luck finding any of the old stuff. That's kind of the message he's projecting because whatever he's bagging, you can't get new that's for certain well you can it's going to have an innova stamp on it or it it, yeah yeah it's just kind of frustrating to see something like that where Discmania had the opportunity to go through and be like yep you have to use our new stuff that's it that old stuff isn't our stuff it's not ours anymore it might have our stamp but it's not ours you got to use the new stuff yeah, they kind of missed an opportunity there, but we'll see what happens. I wish them the best. Hopefully it all works out, but who knows? I don't know. I do not know, but that seems to be everything that's going on from the all-star weekend. That seems to be everything that was going on with the pricing structure update. And now we're going to talk about the live media plan. 
Okay, so the post-production plan for 2024. Who's surprised that Jomez is basically nothing's changing? Raise your hand. No? No one? Bueller? Bueller? Nothing has changed there with them. In fact, they might be covering just a little bit more. Ace Run has completely stepped away from FPO coverage. So I believe Jomez is going to be taking over some of the FPO stuff here, but Ace Run is gone. They're off the map when it comes to this. They might come back, do select things, do different things, but Ace Run has decided that it is not financially viable to continue with that. Gatekeeper will continue doing MPO Chase, but that will be using DGN cameras and footage. So they won't actually be there. They're just going to get whatever the feed is, save it, hack it, and do it all in the fantastic Gatekeeper model. Okay. GK Pro is basically just doing skins, but not at every single one. They're just going to be doing skins at select events. You'll be able to buy tickets. Pros will be there. It'll be great. It'll be fantastic. Not much to really say there. Jeff Spring did say that they had financially helped out some of these companies before and allowed them free access. And now the free ride is over and those companies cannot afford to be able to do business with the Pro Tour. So if you're looking forward to Ace Run coverage, Gatekeeper coverage or yeah sorry ace run coverage or the actual cameras from gk or gatekeeper man struggling words are hard well you won't find it because they're going to be doing other things gatekeeper will still kind of do it but not not cover it as much uh they won't actually have physical cameras there one thing that will be nice is there will be less camera operators there at each hole they'll have them spread out more and be able to do more and hopefully cover more shot angles but you won't have two people three people filming the same tee shot because one is for this one one is for this one one is for that one none of that you're gone see ya bye bye don't let the don't let the door hit you on the way out hey that's basically what it is so if you are upset about that let, let them know. Hopefully things can change. Support those companies if you want. It's a good idea. It really is. If you like their content, go ahead, buy some of their merch, send them some money on Patreon, whatever it is. Hopefully you can help them out and maybe the, things will change in the future. We don't know. But I believe that does it for this show, this episode. Wow, we've been at it for quite a while here. Thank you all for watching. We talked about a lot today. Talked about dgn app we talked about the all-star weekend we got coming up the preview show coming out probably thursday night depends what the uh depends what the oh words are being so hard right now press conference is going to be we'll see i don't know i'm glad to be back i really appreciate all you guys and gals that are out there watching listening and everything Leave me a review wherever you listen to your podcast, Apple, Spotify, wherever else. I believe we'll be on Google Podcasts for the next like two weeks until that gets shut down. I believe that is actually getting shut down. It's not just me joking about Google killing another product. I believe that is going to be killed. I don't remember off the top of my head. So if you're listening there, you probably got notifications. But hey, just as a heads up, look elsewhere. Leave a like, comment, subscribe on YouTube, wherever you get anything. It's awesome. So thank you all. And Rumble on there too. Just kind of putting my stuff out everywhere. Thank you all for watching. As always, I've been Joe. You've been awesome. And when you get a great tree kick, don't forget to thank Treesus. And if you get kicked deeper into the woods, well, you need to repent and reflect because you have transgressed against Treesus. Can't wait to see you all in the next episode.